The past two days, as we have been discussing the seven last words of Jesus Christ from the cross, we focused on two sacraments, two sets of words and two sacraments. And the two sacraments are sacraments of healing, reconciliation, and anointing of the sick. Today, with the words that our Lord will say from the cross and on which we will meditate, you and I, we'll begin focusing, contemplating on the sacraments of service. On the cross, our Lord looks down upon his mother and the beloved disciple, those who have remained faithful, have not fled or run away, but rather have stayed there at the foot of the cross, keeping vigil, keeping alert and awake, just as Jesus has said to Peter, James, and John in Gethsemane. In Gethsemane, John fell asleep. At the foot of the cross, John stays awake. And both Our Lady and John, the beloved disciple, look with love upon the Lord dying. And the Lord says to Our Lady, Woman, behold your son. And then to this disciple, now become son, behold your mother. What sacrament is this? The sacrament of holy matrimony. This is why Adrian von Speer says that the Lord's passion is so intense, it is like a woman's labor pains, her birth pains. The child to be born is the church in all her manifold aspects. That our Lord suffering on the cross has a fruitful suffering, but that fruit comes from marriage. This is how. The Lord presents Our Lady with his beloved disciple, John. And this presentation penetrates deeply into the church's core, represented here by the relationship of mother and son, Mary and Jesus. John here, though, takes the place of the Lord. And John's sonship is the sonship of the Spirit. It's the sonship of the Lord's love and the Lord's passion, but it's not one without obligation, because immediately once Jesus says, Woman, behold your son, he turns to the disciple and says, Behold your mother. There is a new relationship, a new union, a new marriage. Instead of it being a marriage that ends till at death do you part, this is a marriage that begins and continues throughout all eternity. This marriage of the mother and the son, the marriage of the church and her Lord, the marriage of God and man united already in the one who himself is the bridegroom. God and man are united as one. Adrian von Speer continues by saying, if an ordinary bridal couple were to stand beneath the cross and the Lord were to give them the nuptial blessing from the cross, this particular couple would be exalted above all other couples in an, unmost, in an almost unimaginable way. Once and for all, in the whole history of the world, they would be the couple who had enjoyed the grace of the Lord's blessing. And Adrian Van Sperre continues saying, there is such a couple, but they are both virgins. They inhabit a place beyond individual sacramental marriage. And where the church is at her core, the suffering bride of Calvary. Mary and John, the beloved disciple, in some way become an original couple, like Adam and Eve. In Mary and John, all human relationships are refashioned by the dying son. It's a relationship, my dear friends of Christ, that is formed by this outpouring of the love of our Lord. And because of this marriage, the great fruit of the church is born of which you and I are daughters and sons. Saints in the making, as you and I contemplate today 
on the marriage that Christ effects from the cross. He was the priest uniting bride and bridegroom, uniting Our Lady and St. John, who takes the place of Christ, who stands in the person of Christ. And this virginal marriage giving continual birth and bearing fruit that is the church, of which you and I are an integral part, let you and me in gratitude to God for the gift of this Son of His, who died on the cross, loves enough to give us new birth. In gratitude, let us, you and I, make space for grace.